The Collegia Titanica is the division of the ancient Mechanicum and the current Adeptus Mechanicus that operates and oversees the Titans. The colossal combat walkers that are the most powerful engines of war in the Imperium of Man. The Collegia is also more rarely known as the Adeptus Titanicus, a contraction of Adeptus Mechanicus Collegia Titanica. And as the Legio Titanicus in ancient records, dating back to the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy, born of the time during the Age of Strife when the first temples to the Omnissiah were being raised on Mars, the Titans are the personification of the military, might available to the Emperor of Mankind. Bristling with massive cannons and missile launchers capable of wreaking terrible destruction upon an enemy, they dominate the battlefields of the galaxy and are a testimony to the consummate skills of the tech priests of the cult Mechanicus. Every Titan is part of a larger unit called a Titan Legion or a Titan Order. Each Titan Legion is based on a Mechanicus Forge world and remains under the direct control of the Adeptus Mechanicus, who jealously guard these mighty war machines and have the power to sanction which war zones they will commit their forces to. It is this power that gives the rulers of the Adeptus Mechanicus much of their influence when it comes to determining when the armies of the Imperium will fight. It is a power which is coveted by other factions on Terra, especially the priests of the Ecclesiarchy, who would dearly love the reliable support of Titans for their wars of faith. The Titan legions of the Adeptus Mechanicus are amongst the most powerful military entities within the Imperium of Man. Ancient and implacable, Titans are colossal engines of war, massive robotic combat walkers the size of multi-story buildings, rightly known as god machines or god engines to the tech priests, who revere them as the physical embodiments of the machine god. Even the smallest class of Titan is mighty enough to destroy an entire tank squadron in a span of seconds or level a city block. Each Titan Legion is its own ancient warrior order, inextricably linked to the Forge World, or Worlds, on which it is based. The Titan Legions are fierce and proud, each with its own historic alliances and rivalries, and its own unique character that makes it somewhat similar to its counterparts amongst the chapters of the Adeptus Astartes or the Houses of the Imperial Knights. One of the most ancient pillars of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Collegia Titanica, operates the mighty Titans, each a bipedal metal giant armed with weapons able to level entire city districts and protected by armor and void shields, capable of shrugging off attacks from all but the heaviest of foes. Though few in number compared to the uncountable hosts of the Great Crusade, the Titan legions fought at the forefront of the Imperium's expansion, carrying the light of unification to the benighted worlds of mankind. The so-called God Engines of the Titan Legions have served humanity since the Age of Strife, though their true origins remain lost in the Dark Age of Technology. During the Age of Terra the human race advanced beyond its ancient pre-industrial past to obtain spacefaring capability. In this ancient time, mankind slowly and painstakingly began to settle the habitable worlds in its own solar system and in the neighboring star systems near its homeworld, using massive starships capable of only sublight speeds. Mars was one of the first colony worlds to be settled by humanity, if not the first. Hundreds, then thousands more were to follow during the period of human history that would become known later as the Age of Technology. For twenty-five standard millennia, mankind ruled the stars, tamed them, and bent them to its will. Wonders beyond imagining were commonplace in this age, and no miracle of techno-arcana was beyond human skill. The worlds of humanity were like silver jewels that glittered among the firmament, and mankind held in its hands the means to sunder reality itself, or to remake it to the mold of its thoughts. Only the haughty Eldari and, long before them, the cold-blooded Slani, had stood higher in the ranks of creation, and like the domains of those once mighty ancient civilizations, humanity's utopian interstellar realm would not last. Some archaeodata available to the Adeptus Mechanicus suggests that the fall of humanity's old empire was precipitated by the spontaneous manifestation of species-wide psionic abilities 
and the widespread emergence of human psychers. Some fragmentary surviving records relate a massive invasion of human space by myriad alien species. Other archives record a galaxy-wide warp storm, which sundered the commerce and communication of the worlds of mankind. Others still relate that the sentient machine intelligences created by humanity as soldiers and servants, which humanity had come to rely on in all matters, rose up in the cybernetic revolt, and laid human civilization low on every world across the entire empire, in a single moment of horror. In truth, it is most likely that all of these events occurred. Certainly when the fall came, its onset was swift. When the killing blow of human interstellar civilization landed, it was delivered by many hands. Paradise was lost, in no small part through the hubris and weakness of those men and women who had misused what the cult mechanicus would later believe were the sacred gifts of advanced technology. Whatever the causes at a stroke, the once galaxy-spanning empire of humanity collapsed into anarchy, insanity, and death. Those human-settled worlds not swallowed up by the raging warp were consumed by slavering alien nightmares. Those not torn apart by the hands of their own machine servants were laid low by their own, a cannibalistic rage that consumed formerly enlightened peoples as their economic and social conditions suddenly collapsed. It is even said that great swaths of humanity were enslaved at this time to the will of unknowable malevolent intelligences born of the warp itself, that reality which human FTL-capable starships relied upon to traverse the vastness of space, possessed, as humanity's distant ancestors would have understood it. Interstellar travel and communications became erratic as the warp storms became more frequent and more intense as the birth pangs of the chaos god Slanesh roiled the immaterium. The use of warp drives and astropaths to tie together human-settled space became increasingly useless during this time. Billions eventually died as a result of the wars, renegade psychers, demonic possessions and starvation that ran rampant in this dark period. Across the galaxy the light of civilization was extinguished. The greater part of humanity was slain by the various calamities, and the fraction that remained were plunged into an age of anarchy, savagery, and insanity that would rage across the galaxy for some five Terran millennia. This was the age of strife, and never was an era of human history so aptly titled. Even Old Earth, the cradle of humanity where the age of strife was better remembered as Old Night, fell during that darkest of epochs, her oceans boiled away and her great cities burned to ashes by the constant wars for control of shrinking resources and the use of once unthinkable weapons of mass destruction. Humanity's finest were rendered to mindless savages. Blood-maddened primitives remembered as techno-barbarians used artifacts of high technology as blunt clubs to brain one another to death amidst the shattered ruins of their forefathers' glory ignorant of the inheritance denied them. Mars, the red planet which had long served as humanity's wellspring of scientific advance and technological wonder, was not spared the chaos. Yet here some vestige of order, perhaps the last shred of rationality remaining to the entire species, was saved. In the midst of a world of shattered advanced machines, whose leaders could no longer acquire sufficient food or resources to accommodate its large population, even as the terraforming protocols that had kept Mars habitable broke down, the preservation of life came to depend upon the preservation of knowledge. The smallest scrap of ancient technical knowledge meant the difference between extinction and survival on a world whose once carefully constructed biosphere was in the process of unraveling before its people's eyes. Thus, in time, those able to coax some ghost of functionality from the vast metal corpses among which Mars's population clung to life came to be regarded as prophets of the most sacred data, and so too did the vessels of such knowledge come to be seen as holy. The mechanisms by which data was preserved, processed and transmitted became themselves objects of religious veneration, the most holy of holies. Machines capable of cognition were of utmost value, yet they were known to be in equal part dangerous. 
The custodians of knowledge on ruined Mars preached the sanctity of the machine, even as they remained vigilant against the return of true self-awareness, ever fearful that the thinking machines might again turn upon what remained of humanity as they had at the dawn of the Age of Strife. And thus, amidst the ruins and wreckage of an advanced civilization scattered across the reborn oxide-red deserts of Mars, mankind set the first foot upon the long and arduous march to redemption. Over countless generations, the custodians of the machines gathered together what scattered remnants of advanced technology they could recover from the dangerous Martian wastes, composing a canon of knowledge that formed the basis of a new religion, the cult of the machine. Blessed with secrets yet denied the bulk of what remained of humanity, these so-called tech priests raised great foundries or forged cities across the surface of the Red Planet, and from them soon flowed a torrent of machines, artifices, instrumentations and weapons of every conceivable form and function, from microscopic nanite war swarms to towering, armored robotic giants that were capable of destroying entire cities. This cult mechanicus, dedicated to the animistic worship of the deity they named the Machine God, and under the direction of the faith's rigid hierarchy of tech priests, set about restoring order to their world. The Titan Legios themselves came into being on Mars during the Anarchy of Old Night, when the fabled triad Ferrum Morgulus was established. This trio of nascent Titan orders consisted of the Legio Tempestus, Legio Mortis and the Legio Ignatum, and while all three stood against the horrors of old night that plagued Mars, from ravening Xenos to thinking machine aberrations, they were just as equally likely to fight one another. For each served the interests of its home fort city above all else, so that throughout the long age of anarchy, rivalries were established that much later would bear bitter fruit indeed. The tech priests of Mars built their first temples to the machine god and eventually restored order to the red planet as the age of strife continued to consume other human worlds. They established a new planetary government led by the leading magi of the cult Mechanicus that was known as the Mechanicum, which was led by a senior tech priest given the title of the Fabricator General of Mars. Perhaps inevitably, there followed a period of outright war as rival sects of tech priests sought supremacy, whether doctrinal or temporal, but at length, an uneasy balance of power was achieved, although schisms, heresies and betrayals remained constant. An internecine web of power, patronage and influence came to bind the warring Mechanicum factions together, until eventually the tech priests of Mars were sufficiently united in purpose to expand their power beyond the Red Planet beyond the soul system, and out into a galaxy still riven by warp storms and preyed upon by monstrous human tyrants and Xenos fiends. No archive recalls the details of every Mechanicum colonization arc sent forth into the darkness, but it is likely that their failure rate was astronomically high, and that millions of tech priests and Martian colonists perished during this so-called Long March. Nonetheless, some colony vessels did reach their target worlds through the warp, by luck or other circumstance, and thus were the seeds of the cult Mechanicus scattered across the galaxy. Some of these colony worlds would at length grow to become true, forge worlds, akin to Mars, and yet in many cases possessed of their own variation of culture and cult ritual shaped by their own unique historical and environmental realities. Others became more of the so-called night worlds, colonies established on planets that were rich in resources and which would one day feed and sustain the ravenous appetites for food and resources of the forge worlds themselves. In time, the great warp storms which had divided the galaxy were dispelled as the 30th millennium dawned after the fall of the Eldari and the birth of the chaos god Slanish. At last, the rebirth of humanity could begin. The powerfully psychic being known only as the Emperor led his followers against the tyrants of old night, and during the subsequent unification wars finally united all the peoples of old earth, now called Terra, under one government for the first time in five standard millennia. Some say that the tech priests of Mars had long observed the scattered techno-barbarian tribes of old earth, 
watching them from afar as this great warlord arose from the multitudes of the techno-savages to unite those who would heed his message and conquer those who would not. As he gained in power, the tech priests grew jealous of this distantly observed individual and the mastery of technology he, above all the other petty warlords of Terra, so obviously possessed. And as his armies and his power grew, they knew that their irregular sorties to recover lost technological wonders from the ruins of old Earth had come to an end. A genius the likes of which mankind had never witnessed, the Emperor created the transhuman space marines of the Legions Astartes, and set above them his superhuman gene sons, the Primarchs, who would lead humanity into a long-planned four age of reconquest that would become known as the Great Crusade. It was upon the slopes of the greatest mountain on Mars, Olympus Mons, that this man, if such a label could truly be applied to him, the Emperor of Mankind, first set foot upon the Red Planet. Mars was the first human colony he had encountered beyond mankind's homeworld. Heralded by all those on Mars who met him as the Omnissiah, the physical incarnation of the machine god, some within the cult Mechanicus were not entirely pleased with this turn of events. A few of these malcontents incited a short and bloody insurrection against the majority of those within the cult who called for an alliance with the Emperor, but eventually the opposition was crushed, and Mars and Terra were finally reunited after millennia of separate development by the agreement called the Treaty of Mars in the late 30th millennium. This accord formally founded the Imperium of Man as an alliance between Terra and the ancient Mechanicum government of Mars, and granted the latter the autonomy required to maintain their faith even as the Emperor intended to spread his secular and atheistic imperial truth across the galaxy. Upon Olympus Mons, the lords of the Red Planet ascended to their place alongside the Imperium of Man, but the Mechanicum would ever remain an empire within an empire, for machine domains other than Mars existed across the galaxy, and would in time swear fealty to the Fabricator General of Mars, in recognition of the fact that the unification of all humanity could not be achieved without the technological and scientific aid of the Mechanicum, Mars became an ally to Terra rather than her subject. With the massive human resources of Terra and the colossal technical and industrial power of Mars, the Emperor could begin his mighty enterprise of reconquering the galaxy on a firm foundation. Many long-forgotten human-settled planets were liberated, and many more worlds were settled anew. Thus began the Great Crusade and over the next two hundred Terran years, the Imperium of Man rapidly expanded across the galaxy, as the Emperor's hosts pushed ever outwards into the galaxy, casting back the horrors that had gripped the scattered human worlds for so many long centuries, the Titan Legions marched with them, fighting alongside the transhuman space marines of the Legiones Astartes, the elite void soldiers of the Solar Auxilia, and numerous other forces in the rapidly expanding Exertus Imperialis, the Titan Orders came upon other planets dominated by their long-lost kin. Forge worlds not unlike Mars, and ruled by similar techno-theocracies dedicated to the machine god who had settled these worlds after being sent out by Mars into the interstellar void during old night. A few refused to acknowledge the primacy of the Red Planet over their variants of the cult Mechanicus, and had to be forced to submit, or in some cases were even destroyed. The majority however knew of the Red Planet through the few fragments of archive data and echoes of legend which had managed to survive after the settlement of their worlds during the Age of Strife, and willingly took their place in the new order. Myriad were the hosts of the Mechanicum who swore their allegiance to the Great Crusade, from the bellicose Myrmidon cults to the cybernetic flesh constructs of the Lacrimale. Mightiest of them all, however, were the god engines of the Collegia Titanica, a singular martial class within and simultaneously quite distinct from the standard ranks of the cult Mechanicus. The towering bipedal god engines known as Titans have served the tech priests of Mars since the time referred to only as the era of pathogenesis in the Age of Strife. Though little date from this time survived the millennia, it is known that Titans first appeared during a great and terrible conflict fought between the besieged forces of the nascent Mechanicum 
and a debased caste of Kabbalistic heretics named the Psy Carnivora. Vast swaths of the blasted red wastes of Mars had fallen to the Psy Carnivora mech rites, and it took the creation of three entire Titan orders of what would become the Collegia Titanica to defeat them. These three Titan orders were collectively named the Triad Ferrum Morculus, and it was from the template of their creation that all future Titan orders were founded. Created to defeat the monstrous hunger engines of the Psy Carnivora, little could stand before a Titan, and nothing before an entire Titan order, which at its height might number between 200, 300 towering engines of destruction. Having finally driven the horrors of Old Night from Mars, the Titan orders were frequently fielded in the service of one forged city against another, in a series of internecine civil wars and religious schisms, which seeded enmities that would bear bitter fruit in the dark times to come. When at length the Emperor came to Mars and the Treaty of Mars was sworn at the great Martian mountain of Olympus Mons, the Titan orders were turned to the service of the Great Crusade, where their devastating weaponry, impregnable armor, and the peerless skill and devotion of their pilots proved every bit as destructive against recalcitrant human empires and Zeno's horrors as they had against the Psy Carnivora. As the Great Crusade expanded ever outwards from Terra, the hosts of humanity encountered numerous human-settled worlds. Many were possessed of only the basest technologies, while a few were the equals of Mars itself. Thus were discovered the colonies sent forth by the Mechanicum into the void during the long march of the Age of Strife. Such was the deep-rooted imprint of the cult Mechanicus that even separated by long lonely millennia and tens of thousands of light years, these autonomous machine domains recognized and acknowledged a manner of fealty towards the Mechanicum of the Red Planet. While each of these forge worlds would remain sovereign until much later at least, each swore powerful oaths to the tech priests of Mars in shared veneration of the Omniscia. The greatest of the newly discovered forge worlds were found to host their own Titan orders, and while many had developed their own unique and sometimes idiosyncratic cultures, others were discovered to have organized themselves along a similar line to the original Martian triad Ferrum Morgulus, suggesting some underlying machine principle or pattern at work, which the lords of Mars looked upon and found pleasing. Of the lesser forge worlds not possessed of the necessary templates, resources or expertise to construct and operate their own titans, Mars favored those who swore fealty with such patronage that they might do so. Within scant solar decades of the outset of the Great Crusade, the Mechanicum had discovered or founded a score of titan orders, and by the turn of the first century of the Great Crusade, the orders of battle by which the Titan Legios arranged themselves had become somewhat codified, and while individual bodies exercised considerable variation in strategy, a degree of standardization was evident. The Fabricator General of Mars proclaimed that the many Titan orders should be recognized as a distinct class within the greater corpus of the Mechanicum, that its doctrines, traditions, and battle honors might be propagated and preserved for the good of all mankind. This body was to be known as the Collegia Titanica, and while the Legios themselves would remain subservient to the will of the individual forge lords, it would soon become a politically influential entity within the emerging structures of the nascent Imperium of Man. The Collegia Titanica came to rate the strength of each Titan Legion according to a complex formula that allotted each a militaris grade. First-tier designations ranged from primus to denarii, with a range of further clausal numerical definitions describing the legio's specific capabilities, specializations, and other characteristics. Though it rarely told the whole truth, the most obvious measure of a titan legion's strength was ever the number of god engines it could field, with the largest maintaining as many as 200, 300, while the smallest might be able to muster barely a dozen. In reality, however, the mixture of titan classes was a far more reliable indicator of potency of a legio than raw numbers. Few indeed could field the colossal Imperator class, while almost all fielded significant numbers of Warhound Scout Titans, the lightest common god engine with the ubiquitous Warlord, the standard Battle Titan, a proven and powerful design which made up the bulk of most legios's main strength. 
There were many other classes besides, notably the ancient Reaver and several warlord variants such as the Nemesis and Night Gaunt and other rarer chassis, whose designs such as the Apocalypse, Carnivore and Komodo were unique. Many Titan legions had a particular mix of god engines they preferred to commit to battle, exemplifying their own specific battle doctrines. The Legio Audax, also known as the Ember Wolves, for example, fielded a large number of Warhound Scout Titans, employing them as fast-moving hunting packs that were fearsomely effective at harrying and bringing down far larger enemy engines. Most Legios, however, sought to maintain a balanced and flexible force, able to prosecute a wide range of operations and confront many different foes. Though some Titan legions used their own vernacular, the Collegia Titanica enforced an overall degree of standardization in unit nomenclature. Depending on their role, Titans were fully capable of operating individually, and often did so when supporting conventional imperial ground units. In practice, they were often deployed in formations of anything from two to ten god engines, but broken into formal units known as a maniple, comprising five god engines, the numeral five having an occult and numerological signifier of destruction in many numiscantic systems of prognostication favored by the machine cult. The most senior titan commander, or princeps, was appointed as the maniple's leader, and this force was considered sufficient to prosecute all but the most apocalyptic of battles. By the height of the Great Crusade at the dawn of the 31st millennium, dozens of Titan orders marched to war in the name of the Emperor. The Collegia Titanica on Mars served as overall repository for the martial traditions and templates of the Titan orders, though in reality each was in effect its own master. By the auspices of the Collegia Titanica, each Titan order assumed its own title, including both High Gothic and Low Gothic monikers, icons, banners, colors, and other unique elements of heraldry. The Great Crusade continued to expand outwards until the Imperium encompassed nearly the entire galaxy by the early years of the 31st millennium. At that time, a new and unexpected threat emerged to challenge humanity's dominance over the galaxy. This was the rebellion against the rule of the Emperor that would be known to later ages as the Horus Heresy. This revolt was instigated and led by the Warmaster Horus, the greatest and most beloved of the Emperor's sons, the transhuman Primarchs who served as his generals, governors and proconsuls. The rebellion began with Horus's virus bombing of those space marines whose loyalties to him were suspect on the world of Istvan III and soon took hold amongst half of the Space Marine Legions and many of the Titan Legions serving under the command of the War Master, until nearly one-third of the entire armed forces of the Imperium had sworn their allegiance to the traitors. It is not entirely clear how Horus managed to turn such a significant percentage of the armies under his command against the Emperor, but he was known to be a very skilled and persuasive leader who commanded immense personal loyalty amongst his subordinates. But even before the opening stages of his planned insurrection occurred, he knew he would have to secure the support of the Mechanicum and their superior technology and weapons if he was to defeat the Emperor and conquer the galaxy. Horus won over the loyalty of many of the Mechanicum's tech priests after promising them the lost secrets of ancient standard template construct, STC technology, that had been recovered from the worlds of the recently subjugated Orishan technocracy by the sons of Horus Legion. The political climate on Mars was full of discontent during this tumultuous time. There were tense relations between the various Technomagi with sporadic outbreaks of espionage and violence being committed against the various forged cities that represented the primary socio-political units of Mars. There were even unconfirmed suspicions that the Titan Legions had already secretly chosen sides in case of a potential civil conflict. Regulus, the Mechanicum's representative to Horus's 63rd expeditionary fleet, who had already thrown in his lot with the War Master's cause, was sent to the Red Planet to secure the tentative support of the Fabricator General of Mars and the overall leader of the Mechanicum Kelbor Hal. Regulus convinced the Fabricator General of Horus's resolve to support increased autonomy for the Mechanicum against the autocratic rule and technological restrictions of the Emperor. 
As a show of his appreciation for the Fabricator General's support, Porus provided information to Kelbor Howell that allowed the Mechanicum to open a repository of forbidden knowledge known as the Vaults of Moravec, which had been sealed for nearly a thousand Terran years. The Emperor himself had decreed that the vaults never be opened, for they contained innumerable artifacts of ancient technology that had been fashioned or corrupted by the malign power of chaos in ages past. But the deal was struck, and the Fabricator General accepted Horus's proposal and joined forces with the War Master, assisting the traders with all of the most advanced technology of mankind at his disposal. When this repository was reopened, there was all manner of forbidden arcane knowledge and weaponry that had obviously been tainted by the corrupting influence of chaos stored within. Soon the corruption spread throughout the forged cities and temples across the Red Planet as scrap code, chaos-contaminated digital source code that was infected with an arcane computer virus, infested the logi stacks and cogitator computer archives of the Mechanicum, causing literal chaos to emerge in any cogitator system that was networked to one of its infected counterparts. The Fabricator General and his Dark Mechanicum allies used this disruption to marshal the strength of their forces, intent on bringing the rule of Mars firmly under their control. Infected by this vicious scrap code, the titans of the Legio Agravides and the Legio Fortidus met their end when their reactors went critical and exploded, destroying their fortresses and eliminating these once proud titan orders from the roster of loyalist forces. In later years this night would become known in Mechanicum legends as the Death of Innocence. Later histories would record that the first blow of the Martian Civil War was struck against Magos Matthias Kefra, whose forged city in the Sinus Sabaeus region was housed within the Madler Crater. Titans of the Legio Magna marched from the southern Noachus region and within solar minutes had smashed down the gates of Kefra's forge. Howling engines daubed in red, orange, yellow and black, decorated with flaming horned skull devices, ran amok within the high walls of the crater, crushing everything living beneath them and destroying thousands of standard years of accumulated wisdom in a fury of fire. Vast libraries burned and weapon shops that served the Imperial Army troops of the Solar Guard were reduced to molten slag as the indiscriminate slaughter continued long into the night, the Legio Madna's trumpeting warhorns sounding like the atavistic screams of primitive savages. Amid the Athabasca Valleys, the war machines of the Legio Ignatum and the Burning Star's Titan Legion fought in bloody close quarters through the teardrop landforms caused by catastrophic flooding in an earlier ancient age of the Red Planet. Neither force could gain the advantage, nor could either claim victory, so after a night's undignified scrapping, both withdrew to lick their wounds. Along the borders of the Lunai Palace and Arcadia regions, what previously had been simply a heated debate between the partisans of the Emperor and Horus, erupted into outright civil warfare, as Princeps Ulrisha of the Deathstalkers, unleashed his war engines upon the fortress of Maxin Vledig's Legio Honorum. Caught by surprise, the Legio Honorum lost nineteen titans in the first solar hour of battle, before withdrawing into the frozen wastes of the Mare Boreum and seeking refuge in the dune fields of Olympia Unday. Their calls for reinforcement went unanswered, for all of Mars was tearing itself apart as the plague of civil war spread across the planet in a raging firestorm, a conflict known as the Schism of Mars by later generations. The Fabricator General's betrayal had only begun to unfold, and would soon see the Dark Mechanicum and the traitor Titans of Mars joining Horus in open war against the Emperor on Terra itself. The siege of Terra by the traitor forces of Horus began in 014 M31 with an orbital bombardment by the War Master's fleet as the prelude to invasion. After solar days of shelling, the heretic Astartes of the Traitor Legions landed on the surface of Terra in drop pods and advanced on the two spaceports nearest the location of the Imperial Palace to secure them in preparation for the main landings of the Traitor forces. Elements from five of the Traitor Legions participated in the battle, aided by Traitor forces already on the surface. Despite the brave efforts of the Loyalists, the Eternity Wall and the Lion's Gate spaceports fell within solar hours to the traitors. With them secured, 
Horus's remaining troops in the Traitor Legions and their Traitor Imperial Army and Dark Mechanicum support forces landed en masse, and the hulking transports carried thousands of troops each. They also brought to the battlefield the terrible traitor titans that served the War Master's cause and had been infected with the demonic spirits of chaos. The transport's immense size made them prime targets for Terra's defense lasers. Although many of the traitor landing craft were destroyed in atmosphere, notably the transport vessel carrying the Legio Damnatus, many more made it to the surface, disgorging yet more soldiers, main battle tanks and traitor titans to add to the besiegers' strength. They met stiff resistance from the Loyalists, as the Imperial defenders knew that the survival of their homeworld, their Emperor, and the entirety of the human race rested on their shoulders. The siege of the Imperial Palace then began in earnest. Three times the forces of chaos scaled the walls, and three times were hurled back by the defenders. Frustrated at this lack of progress, Horus granted the Legio Mortis, Death's Heads, the singular honor of breaching the walls of the Imperial Palace, amongst whose defenders were the loyalist titans of the Collegia Titanica and the Death's Head's hated rivals, the Legio Ignatum. Using the many powerful weapons at their disposal, they eagerly set about the task. By virtue of their insane fury, they accomplished this near-suicidal endeavor, despite suffering the losses of over thirty titans in one evening of fierce fighting. The Chaos Warlord class titans broke the outer walls and let inwards a flood of traitors. But ultimately, the traitors' assault failed as the final events of the heresy played out aboard Horus's own flagship, the Vengeful Spirit. The Emperor triumphed during the confrontation between himself and the Chaos Corrupted War Master, but only at the cost of his own mortal wounding. The majority of the traitor legions scattered following this disastrous defeat and the Imperial forces gave chase, unleashing the period known as the Great Scouring. Hunted and pursued system by system, the Traitor Legions and the Traitor Titan Legions eventually were driven into the Eye of Terror, and the worlds they had occupied were reconquered by the Imperium. Following the Horus Heresy, the Collegia Titanica continued to serve the Mechanicum, now the reformed Adeptus Mechanicus, and the Imperium, bringing its might to bear where it was deemed required. Throughout the heresy, past rivalries between certain Titan legions were aggravated into outright hatred once they found themselves on opposing sides. For millennia after the Great Conflict, the Loyalist Titan orders continued to battle the surviving traitor Titan legios at every opportunity, and one of their most significant assignments was bearing vigil over the Eye of Terror and guarding Imperial space from Chaos Raids and Black Crusades. The Collegia Titanica also protects the Imperium from Xenos incursions and other threats. Although as a result of their political autonomy as part of the Adeptus Mechanicus, they are generally not concerned with any internal political quarrels that may occur between the Imperium sometimes competing Adepta, they do at times interfere at the behest of their Mechanicus masters, whatever their motives may be. The Collegia Titanica is organized into separate divisions, which each contains a number of Titan legions, sometimes called Titan Orders. A Titan Legion is a group of Titans of different classes, under the overall command of a Grand Master, originating from a common forge world or worlds. Each legio is bound by a common heritage, tradition, and school of thought, and each possesses a distinctive code of conduct and their own predilection in regard to particular battlefield operation and employed tactics. Each Titan Legion also has a preference for the use of certain weapons, different uniform designs, Titan decorations, rank names, colors, heraldry, and other peculiarities. All of this variety is within certain limits, as Titan Legions may not, for example, change the existing system of ranks and the Collegia Titanica's standard chain of command, though they still possess much liberty in their mode of operation, similar in ways to the chapters of the Adeptus Astartes. Some Titan Legions were created to fulfill specific battlefield roles, such as assaulting siege works or combat in special environmental conditions, and thus are geared appropriately, both in terms of war gear and mindset. The Collegia Titanica is the chief military arm of the Adeptus Mechanicus. 
and is beholden to that adept as ruling tech priests. By virtue of the autonomy of the Mechanicus within the broader structure of the Imperium, the Titan Legions answer only to the tech priests' own hierarchy. Their deployments and assignments are exclusively decided by the Mechanicus's senior magi, and each has to be authorized by the ruling lords of a Titan Legion's home forge world. This right provides the Magi with great influence over when and where Imperial armies making use of Titan support will fight. On the battlefield, Titans may not be issued orders by other Imperial military commanders, be they Astra Militarum or Adeptus Astartes officers. A Titan battle group's actions will only be decided by their commanding princeps, a ranking magos of the Adeptus Mechanicus accompanying them, or in some situations by the lords of the Forge world the Titan Legion hails from. Although a high-ranking tech priest known as a magos technically holds authority over a Titan princeps, as they respect the princeps' tactical knowledge and experience, the latter would be given much freedom in their actions on the field. The magos, however, will interfere when they deem it necessary, for example ordering the battle group to withdraw from a world in order to avoid unnecessary titan losses. There is one exception to the above. A full member of the Inquisition has the power to commandeer titans already on the field and directly issue them orders, as well as to requisition the deployment of a titan battle group from a forge world. However, a wise and politically astute Inquisitor will be careful when interfering in Mechanicus business, and even more so because the priesthood of Mars is understandably fiercely protective of the Titans they regard as divine incarnations of the Machine God. The number of Titan legions and individual Titans within the Collegia Titanica is unknown, yet their ranks are presumed to be large. The Collegia Titanica has many deployments on its hands, protecting the Imperium not only from traitors, but from Xenos forces and other threats as well. Indeed, the Divisio Militaris deploys over a hundred Titan legions to watch over the Eye of Terror alone, and the galaxy harbors many more dire threats to humanity that require the attention of the Titan legions. In addition to these duties, the Titan legions also take on expeditions which lead them away from the boundaries of the Imperium, bringing new worlds into the Imperial Fold, aiding rogue traders and Adeptus Mechanicus Explorator fleets. The number of Titans in a single Legio varies greatly, as some possess as few as a dozen, and others maintain well over a hundred. Battle losses take solar decades or even Terran centuries to replace, as the construction of a new Titan is a long and extremely laborious process for the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Warlord class is the most commonly found class of Battle Titan amongst the forces of the Imperium, while the Warhound is the smallest, utilized for scouting and flanking purposes. Between them stands the Reaver-class Battle Titan. The towering Emperor Battle Titans, the size of great Imperial cathedrals, are by far the most formidable types of Titans ever deployed by the Imperium, but an increasingly rare sight on the battlefields of the 41st millennium. Titan legions are deployed only in the most vital campaigns of the Imperium, and on battlefields where the terrain and circumstances will allow them to unleash the full power of their colossal weaponry. Over the long millennia of constant warfare, the Titan orders of the Collegia Titanica have developed their own tried and tested tactics and battle formations, many of which are based around the unit known as the Maniple. This is a configuration that makes use of Reaver and Warhound class Titans, consisting of at least three god engines of either class, but up to five if they are available. In a maniple formation, the Warhounds stride ahead of the Reavers, finding and marking targets to be destroyed by the advancing Titans. Some Titan battle groups are in fact only comprised of maniples, and if such a force faces the need to divide its strength, it will create smaller units of near-identical configuration called demi-maniples. The tech priests accompanying a titan battle group carry with them the equipment necessary to accommodate titans engaged in heavy combat, and in addition to the performance of mundane battlefield maintenance, have the means to conduct minor field repairs. The tech priests can facilitate the rarming of titans in the event of the destruction of their original weapons loadout, or refit them with ordnance better suited for the task they face when battlefield conditions change. Damaged titans are taken after battle to the tech priests' facilities for repairs, 
but if during the course of fighting one of them sustains grave damage, it will be withdrawn as soon as possible so as to avoid its untimely destruction and given into the care of the tech adepts. If they prove unable to assuage the battered machine's pain, they will secure the ravaged titan and return it to their home forge world, where it may be given appropriate care. Despite such precautions, the god machines occasionally do fall in combat, much to the grief of the cult mechanicus, and in particular the crews and staff that accompanied them. When a campaign is running its course, although saddened, the forge world will send new titans to replace the battlefield losses and to continue the fight. The Collegia Titanica has four divisiones, the Divisio Mandati, the Divisio Telepathica, the Divisio Investigatus, and most importantly, the Divisio Militaris, which is the main fighting force of the Collegia Titanica. The divisiones are further divided into a number of legions or orders, groupings of titans bound by a common heritage, such as the Legio Ignatum or the Legio Griffonicus. Each Titan Legion is a self-contained unit, headed by an officer who is a princeps, who holds the special rank of Grand Master. The Titan Legions of the Divisio Militaris, or as its legios are more commonly called, the Military Orders, are the main military force of the Collegia Titanica, and each includes its own support staff in addition to its Titans. Each legio is based on its own Adeptus Mechanicus Forge World, most Forge Worlds maintaining one, though others are known to harbor a larger number, with Mars itself having three. Although their home Forge Worlds are technically their bases, elements of the Titan Legions are actually stationed throughout the galaxy, guarding vulnerable locations across the Imperium. Many legios are stationed near the Eye of Terror, ready to combat their Chaos counterparts. Some of the Titan Legions of the Divisio Militaris are highly specialized forces, created to deal with siege works or undertake combat in exotic planetary environments. The Titan Legions of the Divisio Mandati are known as Executive Orders. They travel in vast temple spacecraft, responsible for bringing the Pax Imperia to isolated worlds of the Imperium. Each temple ship carries between two and five of the immense Emperor Titans, as well as tech priests, Mechanicus regular troops, maintenance adepts and support personnel. Each Emperor Titan in the Divisio is its own self-contained unit, carrying members of the Adeptus Arbites, the Inquisition, and the other Adepta of the Adeptus Terra. With an Emperor Titan as their platform, servants of the Imperium can be very persuasive, and if that fails, they possess more than enough firepower to get their point across. It is through this combination of persuasion and potent threat that the Pax Imperia is brought to many new human-settled worlds. Some of the executive orders never leave the boundaries of Imperial space, confined to the dioceses left to their care. The elite of the Divisio Mandati's Titan Legions are known as Missionary Orders. They travel beyond the borders of the Imperium, often accompanying rogue traders in discovering new worlds and regions of space to be settled and exploited by mankind. Being highly specialized, the Divisio Telepathica is somewhat smaller than the Divisiones Mandati and Militaris. The Divisio Telepathica is responsible for the operation of the dreaded Psi Titans, such as those of the Ordo Sinister, whom, judging by their known deployments, are specially designed to combat the forces of Chaos and the traitor Titan legions. Its legios are called the Telepath Orders, each operating from a secret forge world near the heart of the Imperium. The existence of Chaos is a closely held secret of the Imperium, as are all those organizations like the Ordo Malleus and the Grey Knights devoted to combating it. Since nearly nothing is known of the Divisio Telepathica, and because of their presumed dedication to combating the ruinous powers, it is not unlikely that it ranks alongside those esteemed servants of the Imperium as being entirely unknown by the greater populace of the galaxy. The Divisio Investigatus, whose Titan legions are sometimes called Research Orders, is the Scientific Research and Development Division of the Collegia Titanica. Its role is to construct the many war engines used by all the Titan legions, and to engineer and test the rare improvements made in Titan technology by the increasingly stagnant Imperium. At times a research order takes part in battle so that it can test its new designs under proper combat conditions. 
The Divisio Investigatus Titan Legions favor the Warlord class Titans, as their well known handling characteristics and capabilities make them an ideal test bed for the Divisio's new devices. Depending on their role, Titans are fully capable of operating individually, and often do so when supporting conventional ground units. In practice, they are often deployed in formations of anything from 2 to 10 god engines, but broken into formal units known as a maniple, comprising 3 to 5 god engines. The numeral, 5 inches having an occult and numerological signifier of destruction, in many numiscantic systems of prognostication, favored by the cult mechanicus. According to tradition, a maniple is made up of five titans, although they may be divided or indeed reinforced into sub-maniples for the duration of a mission. There are countless configurations of maniples as set out in the Libraxis Titanica, each being recorded in exacting detail along with countless footnotes detailing deployments, successes and failures. The most commonly used maniple is called the Axiom. A Warlord Battle Titan leads the Maniple, supported by a pair of Reaver Titans, while a pack of two Warhound Scout Titans ranges ahead to survey the battlefield. The Axiom Maniple is widely regarded as the epitome of balance and tactical opportunity, but is only one among many Maniple configurations, each with its own strength and tactical doctrines. Command of a Maniple is generally granted to the most senior princeps within it, although there have been notable exceptions. In any case, the elevated officer is granted the high Gothic rank of Princeps Seniores, or Princeps Senioris, which means a senior princeps in low Gothic, and is charged with dictating the maniple's strategic and tactical approaches. The senior princeps personality will shape the way the maniple hunts and fights, and as such the rank is highly sought after by ambitious princeps who wish to prove their worth. Titan crews rank alongside the elite of the Imperial Navy in the skill with which they operate their mighty engines of war, although compared to the crews of void-faring warships, they are few in number indeed. The officer known as a Princeps is in total command of the Titan via a Mind Impulse Unit, a complex and not entirely understood cybernetic device that merges the human body and mind with the artificial intelligence of the god engine so completely that a princeps controls the titan's metal form as they would their own flesh. The process is a two-way one, however. For each titan in particular, the more ancient god engines is invested of its own individual, artificially intelligent anime, which is the product of its deeds and the personalities of its former princeps, and which bleeds into the consciousness of the mind of its current princeps to create a gestalt of the two. So immersive is this connection that should the titans suffer damage, the princeps feels it as if their own flesh were wounded. Severe damage is likely to cause crippling stigmata on the princeps' body, and should the god engine be dealt a killing blow, the cyber neural feedback is almost certain to kill them as well. Assisting the princeps are a number of specialist crew, the exact number present and their roles dependent on the class of titan, as well as the doctrines of the parent legio. These officers are known as moderati, sing moderatus, and each has responsibility for a different titan system, such as the sensors, the helm or a specific weapon system, adding their own oversight towards the mind impulse commands of the commanding princeps. Several of these moderati are stationed at the princeps side within the head of the god engine, while others are located elsewhere in the titan's mighty form. The gun moderati, for example, are often stationed in the carapace as near to their weapons as the titan's complex anatomy allows. In addition, one or more tech priests watch over the god engine's mighty plasma reactor, assisted by a small cadre of servitors. While a lighter class of titan, such as a warhound, might have but a handful of crew, a warlord might have a dozen and an imperator class titan even more. As a result of the battles they come through together, and because of their link to their titan's mind impulse unit, princeps and their moderati are often more closely knit than most families. Being linked to the MIU can also be dangerous and even lethal, as the potent machine spirit, artificial intelligence, of a titan can wreck an unprepared individual's consciousness and drive them to madness. 
Damage to the system's circuitry can cause the MIU to go haywire, and in such circumstances, the luckiest crew members are killed instantly by the psychic shock, while the rest are reduced to gibbering lunatics. Most of the crew's own connections to the MIU are equipped with manual emergency cutoffs. However, sometimes the Moderati and Princeps are not able to utilize them quickly enough to avoid the damage. MIU links are attached via implanted cybernetic socket connectors in the cranium and neck, or in the body armor the crew wear. The armor's role is to shield them from secondary damage caused by shrapnel and impacts, and it additionally contains power and life support units, also attached by umbilicals to external devices. These umbilicals have many redundant channels, so that if anyone is severed in the heat of battle, another can easily take its place, making sure that nothing impedes the crew's ability to fight. Not all of a Titan Legion's subjects serve within the bodies of the mighty god engines, for many more fight in their shadow. Each Forge world is served by massive cohorts of Skitari, Secutari, and at Secularis infantry troops, and these are often assigned to provide the Titan Legions with massed ground forces capable of performing the battlefield duties which the Titans themselves are too large to perform. Furthermore, there are those Forge worlds which, having compacted with subservient nighthouses of the Quester Mechanicus, march to war preceded by a fast-moving skirmish line of night lancers and similar classes of combat walker that bridge the gap in size between infantry and titan, engaging enemy vehicles and allowing the titans to concentrate on the heaviest of enemy war machines, in particular enemy titans. It is when an army is to confront an enemy that is itself supported by titans that they truly come into their own and this only came about with the outbreak of the Horus heresy. From the very outset, the Warmaster Horus ensured that as many Titan legions as possible rallied to his banner, and first amongst these was the Legio Mortis, the Death's Heads. And soon others followed. Traitor Titans saw service in the very earliest battles of the Horus heresy, including the Istvan the Thury atrocity and the Istvan v drop site massacre. The Collegia Teutonica was split asunder by the war, and as it spread across the galaxy, the battlefields of the Sundered Imperium burned with the staggeringly destructive potential of these mighty god engines. The battle was never so bitter nor all-consuming, however, as when traitor and loyalist titans faced one another in open war, the mortal soldiers fighting at their feet as inconsequential as insects and slain by the thousands as unimaginable energies were unleashed. Adeptus Mechanicus Tech Priests are charged with maintaining the Titan during the course of a battle, monitoring the state of the unstable and dangerous plasma reactor, which is used to satiate the great machine's colossal power requirements, making sure that there is enough output to operate as many systems as possible, and that a catastrophic meltdown does not occur. In addition, the Tech Priest and their assigned servitors will tend to other devices present on the Titan, guaranteeing that they function to their best ability. Amongst those devices are the Void Shield Generators, which are a Titan's first line of defense. In the process of deflecting and absorbing hits, the generators build up a large excess of power, which eventually will cause them to shut down to prevent damage. A tech priest will attempt to withdraw as much as possible, at the same time carefully monitoring the reactor so that the Titan does not take a direct hit. However, when the void shields fail, the god machine sustains structural damage. In such an event, the tech priest will immediately make sure that the reactor does not threaten meltdown, attempt to bring the void shield generators back online, and then scan the titan, searching for systems which have been disabled by damage, and try to repair them. In all these tasks, the tech priest is assisted by a number of servitors, hardwired into the god engine. To the cult mechanicus, Titans are incarnations of the machine god in the material realm, and possess a sacredness invested in them by virtue of their antiquity and technical complexity. The tech priests proclaim their divine nature by word and ritual. A thousand times blessed and consecrated with the holiest unguents, a titan is a towering walking idol to the tech priests of the machine god. Many see the honor of serving aboard a titan as an opportunity to serve the Om Messiah in person, and there is no greater service a mere mortal can perform. Prior to being sent into battle, 
Ceremonies are performed and the war engines are blessed. Exotic creatures are slain and their blood used to anoint each titan's foot, a symbol of the reality that they will soon lay blood at the emperor's feet. During these rituals, a senior tech priest will sprinkle the machine with sanctified oils and recite passages of the Prima Incubatoria. These rites serve to rouse the titan's machine spirit and prepare it for battle. A holy engine of destruction, a titan's death is greatly saddening to all in the cult mechanicus. When one of their number falls, the rest will attempt to recover its ravaged hull and send it to their home forge world, which will mourn its passing and toll a bell for each titan lost. Uh, uh, uh.